something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love, or my sort of new book, The Chain, which is available over on Wattpad and soon over on Project Shadow. Man, I've been doing a lot to get the new website ready. Uh, anyway, sorry, a little burnt out, if you can't tell. So... Let's talk about Shazam. We finally got to watch it, and I have a lot of thoughts about it. So let's do that, shall we? But before we get started, don't forget, if you haven't already, please rate this podcast wherever you're listening to it. It really does help out a lot. It tells the algorithms to share the podcast with more people. The more people that listen, the bigger the community. The bigger the community, the more chance we have to talk to each other. And, after all... That's why I do this, and hopefully why you're here too. Alrighty, so Shazam. Well, we finally watched it. It's not that I didn't want to see it. This is one of those movies for anybody who's new to the podcast. I have a lot of leg and back issues, and our local theater is fondly referred to by many around here as the Pain Palace. It has the most uncomfortable seats and the most incredibly, terribly designed theaters. So it takes a lot for me to get out to the theater. I really have to be willing to go through a lot of pain to see a film when it's in the theater. And usually I end up standing off to the side or in the back, off and on throughout because, well, the seats are just painful. So, Shazam is now out, and we watched it. I wish Brian was here to talk about it, because I think he enjoyed it just about as much as I did. Overall, right from the beginning, I have to say, I think it was a very good movie. And this may be controversial from some of the opinions that I've seen going around. As far as the most recent crop of DC Comics movies, this one might in my opinion, be the best. Because, while it has some issues, and we'll talk about that, especially when we get into spoilers in a little bit, but it doesn't have the weird tone problems that both Aquaman and Wonder Woman had, which are the other two that I would put at the top of the heap there. And the ending works so much better than Wonder Woman's, which would normally be the one that I would put up on top. And because of, and it's sad to say this, because I, I feel like I'm not really complimenting, like I'm just doing a backhanded compliment here, but because it doesn't have some of the strange quirks that Wonder Woman and Aquaman had, and it kind of comes off as a well-considered movie in and of itself that had an idea behind it of what it was going to be, that kind of makes it the best. And that's one of the big problems with the current spate of DC movies. You can really see the committee hearings that went into making them. You can tell when different voices forced variant things to be in the film. This movie didn't have the half-hearted special effects that the other films had. It didn't... Well, it it still suffered a little bit from the tonal problems that the other movies did, but not nearly to the extent that they did. And I can't wait to see Shazam 2. I believe they've already said that they're going to do a second movie. So I, I, I think they will learn, hopefully, from the success of this movie and do even better going forward. All in all... 
this is so much of what a DC movie should be. Honestly, I don't know if there's anything else I can say about this film without getting into spoilers, so if you have not seen Shazam and do not want to be spoiled about anything that happens in the movie, and I will probably be talking about the end of the movie quite a bit, then you should probably stop listening in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, I want to start with the tonal problem because I want to end really positive because all in all, I really liked this movie. But you could tell it was a DC movie in that, oh man, the opening looks like something from a Zack Snyder fever dream. I mean, it's like if Zack Snyder and Tim Burton had a baby, it would be the opening of this movie. That kind of washed out palette when we get to see the first kid get brought before the wizard Shazam, the horrible family, the kid, just uh, the whole thing, just the whole thing, the way they put it, put it all together. Oh man, it was, it was, ups it was worrying is what it was. <laughs> when we first saw this, when we were first watching, I remember looking at Brian like, oh, please tell me they didn't find a way to sap the joy out of Shazam. I heard this was a funny movie. I heard this was a really fun movie. This is not really the way a fun movie should start. But it really did kind of tie it in to the rest of the DC extended universe or whatever we're supposed to call it now that they were doing. Because, yeah, it 1974, it's dark. We're going away for Christmas and there are no toys. No toys. Your grandfather doesn't like toys. You shall have no toys. And you need to be a real man and learn to fight and... Yeah, all that stuff. I get it. They're, they were trying to set up a motivation for the villain because, well, DC has not really had any villains with real motivations in them yet. I am not... Okay, it worked and it didn't work. Yeah, you, you can see where his obsession comes from in that he was offered the power and was found unworthy and spends the rest of his life trying to find his way back so that he can make himself worthy. Okay, fine, I'm good with it. It, it does set a character motivation for our villain and shows a parallel between him and and Billy Batson, or at least what you think will be a parallel between him and Billy Batson when you finally meet Billy. Beyond that, though, it, 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 it's fine. I'm not saying it should have been cut from the movie or it should have been reshot, but oh, oh, don't let it turn you off. I, I think that's the biggest warning that this movie has. Like, Content warning, the beginning of this movie starts off in a very dark, grim, dark way that you've come to expect from us here at DC Comics. Don't worry, the rest of the movie will get better and then get really dark again and then get better again. So, yeah. That was... that was rough. Having Billy find his mother and for her to basically be like, oh... Hi, it's not a good time for me. Bye. I mean, yeah, it does motivate Billy to see his foster family as family. But, oh man, that's a dark place to take the movie. Again, I'm not complaining. I think it works. I, it works well in the way they did it. The characters make sense. The actors did a good job with it. It shot well. But yet again, it's one of those things that really lets you know that you're watching a DC movie because, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to go there. We're going to get dark. We're going to, we're going to go there. And I didn't know how much they, how far they were going to go with Shazam and whether or not they were going to do the Marvel family or the Shazam family, I guess, as they're called now. 
I figured they might, but, you know, I, I tried very hard and succeeded, mostly, from, you know, in avoiding spoilers for it. And yeah, I get it that a lot of DC superheroes have these, like, dark backstories, you know, where their parents die, or they're orphaned somehow. I, I get that. I understand and I accept that. There's something about seeing it happen with children. Because, you know, usually when you get the flashback to Thomas and Martha Wayne dying, you then flash forward to adult Bruce Wayne, who's thinking about it. But no, we stay... Oh, we stay with uh, young... Young Billy Batson. And that that's a bit harsh. And I, I, I really think to, that DC needs to do something about that. If they're going to make this work. That they need to find a way to be just be lighthearted. Just do it. Just go there. It'll, it'll be fine. So the next thing that I think has to be said, because I've seen a lot of pieces talking about how good Zachary Levi was in this, and let's be all honest, did anybody expect him not to do well? I mean, he's just awesome. So, yeah. Okay. But I, I don't think there's been enough talk about Asher Angel or, uh, what was his name? J um, Jack Dylan Grazier, who played the young Billy Batson and Freddie Freeman, respectively. Those two kids did such a good job in this movie that I, I'm just like I almost immediately looked up to see if this was one of those situations where they found somebody who was like in their 30s who looked like they were a kid because they pulled it off so well they pulled off the emotion everything that they needed to do it worked really really well and Faith Herman who played Darla Dudley the little girl in the family Oh my goodness, she is the cutest, like, perfect, just perfect, just perfection. Like, the screen lit up every time she was on there. I, I hope she has a long and wonderful career, because she just, she makes the movie. She's so cute, and she's so perfect in everything that she does. The way that they did the story worked well. I... I saw them set up this Shazam family that's gonna get so that's gonna be tricky for me to say because you know I, I don't know it's just gonna be hard but oh man the moment when it actually happens I jumped out of my seat and hooted and hollered and I don't do stuff like that the the, the whole Shazam family being there them at the very end getting their secret lair Oh my goodness, that that's wonderful. That that I, I just don't I can't wait for the sequel to see exactly how they pull off some of the craziness that this movie really should have. And hopefully hopefully please please movie please remember it's about having fun. That's why this movie's good because it's fun because you did a good job with it in allowing it to be fun but yeah no I I, I I have so many concerns about what the sequel to this will look like because I almost I'm almost at the point where I feel like mm, Sorry, this is really hard to put into words. DC accidentally made a good movie. That Warner Brothers accidentally made a good movie. Like, the reason Shazam, the reason Shazam is good is because they had just kind of given up on the whole DC Universe thing. DC uh, Extended Universe thing, or whatever we're supposed to call it. And just kind of left it alone. And that's why it worked better than the other movies did. 
because a lot of what you would expect to get pushed into this film didn't. Especially with the um, inclusion of Batman with the Batarang and the inclusion at the very end with Superman, who I was curious and looked. Superman was played by Ryan Hanley, and you don't ever see his face, and that's the proto-admission that Henry Cavill is not going to be um, in, you know, playing Superman anymore, which we know, you know, that's been confirmed. He was also a Shazam stunt double in the movie, which makes so much sense when you think about it. I mean, it really does. And just some other stuff, just because I think it's fun. He has been a stunt actor on Supergirl, the TV series. He was Kevin Sorbo's stunt double. He was an Alien Henchman stunt actor. He was Parasite's stunt, stunt double. And Frederick Schmidt's stunt, stunt double. And that's just awesome. <laughs> I like little weird facts. But yeah, the, the ending hit the right tone. It found a way to be serious and raise the stakes while at the same time staying fun. And the reason they were able to do that and find that balance that they needed to find to make the movie work is probably because they were dealing with kids. And so a lot of those darker instincts that they probably wanted to try to push into this didn't make it in. Like, the one thing that I can say is from the very beginning of the movie, the way the movie starts and that strange, like, disjointed backstory, it almost feels like there was an intention at some point to do much more of a Stranger Things take on this. And that was dropped along the way, because you look at the tone, you look at the way that they set everything up with the just the very beginning when we have, uh, what's his name, Dr. Siv um, Savannah? Savannah? Well, when he's a kid, meet the wizard Shazam, that really feels like they're setting up a much more Stranger Things kind of a story with the demons and the sins and just the darkness that they were bringing into that it, it 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 like i said it's totally off it doesn't fit the rest of the movie but by the time you get billy getting his powers the movie to me felt a little slow up until that point and i think that's one of the reasons why zachary, zachary levi is getting a lot of the credit for making the movie seem fun but I don't think that that's a fair thing to say, because the reason the movie feels slow and sluggish at the beginning is not because of the backstory, not because they're setting up who Billy Batson is, or who Savannah is, or any of these other characters. Savannah is... And it's not, 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 that's not it at all. It's that at the very beginning, it feels like you're on a ride into the DC universe that was into the DC movies that we were getting. I mean, it really has that kind of proto Man of Steel feeling to it. And at least for me, I was I was really afraid that what we we're going to get was the Man of Steel version of Shazam. And I think that makes the beginning feel a lot longer and slower than it is because there's that dread. Like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? How are they going to do this? And when Billy Batson laughs, when Shazam reveals his name, say my name. And that laughter, it breaks, it breaks. I mean, that's where the tension just shatters. Because none of the earlier movies would have had that presence of mind to just acknowledge the silliness of the moment like that. Yes, you're Shazam. Your name is Shazam. I have to talk seriously about the wizard Shazam. And at th that's the moment where, at least for me, my muscles relaxed and I was able to get into the film. So if you haven't seen the movie and you're, like, still listening, that's the about that point and shortly after that is where you're going to figure out if this is the movie for you. And it takes a little while to get there. 
but it's not wasted time. You really do find out more about the motivation of the villain, and that's pretty much all that you get, but it helps you understand his actions later in the story. You really do get a good setup for Billy Batson, and the fact that they actually gave him a story arc. The fact that his foster parents have a story arc that goes through this movie, that's another thing that is really rare in this kind of film. I can't think of a superhero film where the superhero's parents have this kind of a story arc. And I'm not including weird robot, you know, Jor-El from Man of Steel, because yeah, he's got kind of a story arc, but that's not really the same Jor-El from the beginning of the movie, and that's getting into realms of meta that I just don't want to deal with. Plus, I don't really want to be thinking about Man of Steel right now. Um, but no, I, I don't think that it counts. But we get to see them want to take the kids in, we see their motivation for taking the kids in, we get to understand their connection with the kids, and to get to see them go through the story arc of seeing their family come together. Now, they don't understand why it came together, and why Billy says the grace at the you know, final meal in the movie, but they're okay with it. They, you know, they, they, they see that as success, that they finally got there, that their family is whole, their family is complete, and you see that story arc take place, and that is just such a beautiful thing. All in all, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It is so worth your time. Before we go, I just want to remind you that I'm going to be at Shore Leave 41, just north of um, Baltimore in Hunt Valley, Maryland, from July 12th to 14th. If you're going to be there, let me know. We'll have you come to one of the parties. <laughs> come to one of the panels. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff that weekend. I uh, will share more information when they give it to me. So that's how this works. If you haven't already, please do rate this podcast wherever you're listening to it. That does help out a lot. If you get a buck, you can throw my way. In the show notes, you'll find a link both to the Patreon and to the community support page. That money helps me do everything that I do. If you don't have any money or you don't feel like giving, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. But if you know somebody that you think would like this podcast, do share it with them. That helps out a bunch too. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show, go down to the show notes. You'll find a link to the to the voice message system. You leave me a voice message. You can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I'm see you on both. You can find links to everything that I do at projectshadow.com. Tomorrow's episode may be late because of the 4th of July. We'll see. Until next time, don't forget to have the fun. Bye.